you may be and however you may be listening, we are live in Los Angeles, iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. We have an absolutely great show today. I was excited about yesterday, Joy Taylor. I think I'm more excited about today. I got a great night's sleep. I got eight hours. I never get eight hours of sleep. I watched that great game last night. It was fantastic. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I saw something last night I have not seen in years. Not Alabama losing, not a, not a route. But Alabama makes everybody uncomfortable. Even when Alabama loses, they make you uncomfortable. You have turnovers, you have a lot of penalties. Clemson was never uncomfortable. With a true freshman quarterback, Clemson had one penalty. With a true freshman quarterback, they had no turnovers. Clemson was never uncomfortable. That's amazing. The dynasty's not dead. Nickel continue to win games. But that kid's going to win another national title next year or the next year. I've always told you the two best NFL quarterback prospects I've ever seen in college are John Elway and Andrew Luck. I am not being hyperbolic here. This kid's number three, and I think he's better than Andrew Luck. He is certainly much better than Andrew Luck as a freshman. I texted three different NFL executives last night, and I said, I posed the question to each of them. I said, if Trevor Lawrence, 6'6", 220 and mobile, was available in the NFL draft as a true freshman, all texted back, he would go number one. And they said, Colin, as good as the quarterbacks were last year, He's better than all of them, too. Darnold, Baker, Lamar, Josh, Josh. Two years ago, I was asked to go to a football camp in San Diego. I did. Trevor Lawrence was a junior about to be a senior. It was the 12 best high school quarterbacks in the country. Nobody was close. Stop trying to convince me, all you college football fans, that your tiny runaround college quarterback's going to change the league, bruh. No, 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 no. Trevor Lawrence, 6'6", can change the league. I like Tua. He'll play in the NFL. He's not changing anything. I like Kyler Murray. He can play in the NFL. He's not changing the league. This kid is an all-time talent. And I don't say that much. I mostly tell you your quarterbacks aren't going to be great. You know how much I like Sam Darnold? He's not close to this. I watched this weekend, Mitch Trubisky, run around guy. Lamar Jackson, run around guy, lose at home. But you know what the NFL is today in 2019 and will be in 2029 and will be in 2039 and will be in 2049? It will be about guys like Trevor Lawrence, who are 6'6", calm, rocket arms, see the field, and pick apart defenses, Alabama's with eight NFL players on it this weekend by the way you want to know who's meeting in the AFC playoffs Philip Rivers and Tom Brady they could not beat a lampshade in a 40-yard dash in the NFC immobile Nick Foles Drew Brees who doesn't run Jared Goff who's a statue and Dak who runs a little yes yes Patrick Mahomes is really really athletic but he's a better thrower than a runner you keep trying to convince me, the college football fan, that you're hyper-athletic, cocky, run-around-the-field guy is going to change the league and wreck the league. No, Trevor, Trevor Lawrence is what every gen of NFL general manager is looking for today, is going to be looking for five years from now, is going to be looking for ten years from now. That a true freshman quarterback could go up against an NFL defense. Go look at the NFL draft this year. It's all Alabama guys in the first round. All defensive guys. No turnovers? One penalty? Alabama's going to win games. But you're trying to convince me there's going to be this massive change in college football. Massive change in pro football. That we're just going to move now to guys running around and guys running. That. That's nice. I like a little mobility. I like that Andrew Luck can move. I wish Eli Manning had some movement and Philip Rivers was kind of athletic, but this league doesn't change, folks. 
I watched Trubisky and Lamar this weekend. Until they become elite throwers, they're not hoisting any trophies. Big Ben's hoisted trophies. Brady's hoisted trophies. By the way, Russell Wilson wasn't hoisting any trophies until he became a pocket passer with also great mobility. Steve Young didn't hoist any trophies until he was initially a pocket guy, uh, a runner, until Steve Young became a runner who was also a great pocket passer. This kid, Trevor Lawrence, this is not being hyperbolic. This is what the NFL is dying to get their hands on. And he would be the number one pick easily. Last year's draft, this year's draft, next year's, and the following years when he comes out. Dabo Sweeney, good dude. Everybody loves him. Congrats to you. Greatest team ever, no idea. Here's little Yabba Dabba Dabo. There was a lot of talk about best ever all year long. Uh, we were never in that conversation. Um, but tonight, there's no doubt. You know, first 15 and no team to beat Notre Dame and to beat Alabama to do it. This team won 13 games by 20 points or more and uh, led by an unbelievable group of seniors. Amazing group. And uh, I'm just thankful to be a part of it. Congratulations. Not sure the greatest team ever. Certainly in the discussion have earned everything. And I can't wait to watch Trevor Lawrence for the next two years in college and to be the next superstar quarterback in the NFL. Let's shift to this. So the Packers have hired a coach, Matt LaFleur. For a year, he was an offensive coordinator at uh, Tennessee, the Titans. It's no big deal, but they made the playoffs when he wasn't there, and then he got there, and the offense got worse. No, it, ac it actually did. Total offense, points per game, passing offense got worse. But he got a job. You know, the young coaches is what you got to hire these days. Got to have a young coach with cheekbones, good looking. I made two calls on Matt LaFleur last night to NFL sources. You know what the, they say about Matt LaFleur? People weren't sure he had the stature, the gravitas, and the alpha to lead a group of men as a coordinator, not a coach. The knock on Matt LaFleur is nobody's quite sure if he can stand in front of guys in an offensive meeting and own the room. <laughs> That's not as a head coach. That's just as a coordinator. Sean McVay, head coach of the Rams, is getting a lot of guys great jobs that I don't think are quite ready. By the way, the Rams, I was told, did not want to hire Sean McVay. They wanted to wait a year because they didn't think he was quite ready, but they knew if they didn't hire him, somebody else would. So they hired him, and he's been a great success. But I saw this, this story yesterday. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury is interviewing for the Cardinals and the Jets job. Really? Really? He got fired at his alma mater in college. You do realize alma maters don't want to fire you. The last thing a school wants to do when you're a legend at the school is fire you. And they had to. He was so bad. Well, Colin, I mean, he it's Texas Tech. What about it? Mike Leach won there. Mike Leach won 85 games and lost 40. Mike Leach won bowl games at Texas Tech. Don't tell me you can't win at Texas Tech. Mike Leach won, but Mike... Leach doesn't have cheekbones. He's not a model. He dresses like a pirate. He's also winning at Washington State. Mike Leach can coach. Mike Leach could win with eight guys, and you have 11 offensively. Okay, Cliff Kingsbury's a nice guy, I'm sure. He had Patrick Mahomes, the NFL's MVP. He couldn't win in the Big 12. <laughs> Come on. He was 19-35 and 35 in the Big 12. Losing record with Patrick Mahomes, who you keep lecturing me. I'm a jerk for not saying automatically he's the MVP of the league. Folks, there's a, there's a huge gap, folks, between knowing football, calling plays, and being a head coach. There's a big difference between being uh, a, a great pit boss at a casino. You could be the best pit boss at Caesars Palace. And I mean, everybody knows that yeah, Bob's the best pit boss. Shirley's the best pit boss. There's a different lit. Congratulations on hiring somebody who people question whether he has the stature and gravitas, the alpha, the it, to lead a coordinator's meeting. Maybe you've heard Aaron Rodgers is aging. He ran a Super Bowl winning coach out of town Good luck to Matt Lefleur. All right, good stuff today. We are packed. We are absolutely packed. I um, 
<laughs> so I, I saw, you know, you know, I like Tom Brady, right? Yes. Yes. That goes without saying. Yes, Tom Brady and Andrew Luck are pretty. And Russell Wilson's list. way you, up you there. Like Although Russell I didn't Wilson. take him this weekend. Right. Um, so Tom Brady said something yesterday. You know how we do buy, sell, or hold? Yes. Well, I'm not going to play buy, sell, or hold, but I am going to be a stockbroker next. And a good stockbroker doesn't fall in love with stocks, doesn't get nostalgic about stocks. He moves on from stocks. He buys low, sell high. That and what it has to do with Tom Brady and why I love New England over the Chargers, more on Matt LaFleur, more on why Belichick's better than Saban. Don't go anywhere. Well, what's the thing on your to-do list that you keep avoiding? Uh, going to the gym, 